Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to finish off this little swing component that we've been working on, which you can use to make things like cellular automata simulations and Minesweeper clones. It's a grid component. And in this video, we're going to make it so you can click the cells and they change to new states. And that's uh, a logic that you can control in the code that actually uses the component. So first we need to be able to detect mouse clicks. Let's go to gridpanel.java and go to the constructor of this grid panel component. And somewhere in the constructor, I'm going to add a mouse listener. So add mouse listener. And that takes something that implements the mouse listener interface. And that has lots of methods, most of which we don't want. So we can conveniently use the mouse adapter, which implements those methods with just dummy methods. And so this is like an anonymous class that we're passing to add mouse listener. And we can just right click and go to source, override, implement methods, and just implement or override the methods that we actually want. So probably here we want mouse clicked. Let's click OK. And we should now be able to detect mouse clicks on this component. Let's check that we actually can. So if we do a system.out.print line and add hello in there, and then we run the code and just click on the panel. You can see it says hello in the output down there. The question is which cell was actually clicked on, and this is pretty easy to figure out. So to do this, we've got this mouse event E, and we can use that to get the coordinates of the mouse relative to the panel. Let's say int grid X, this is what we want to calculate. And initially we can set it equal to E dot get X, but this is going to be ultimately a location of a cell in that grid system, whereas this is a coordinate relative to the panel on the screen. And what I want to do is subtract the left margin from this, and this is why I made that a member variable earlier on. So we need to take into account that there's a margin there, and once we've done that, all we have to do is divide by cell size to get the kind of grid reference. And let's do a similar thing for grid Y. So if I just duplicate that and we can say grid Y. So now we need get Y and now we need top margin. And this should give us the cell location. Let's try doing a system.out.print line. And we're going to output grid X. Let's have a little bit of punctuation there and output grid Y. OK, so if we run this and we click it, so this is 0, 0. You can see that's coming out down there. That's 1, 1. Where's this? 3, 4. Yeah. And it seems to work pretty well all over the grid. So I think that's good. Now, what are we actually going to do with that? Well, we've already got a grid listener interface. And we can make that also listen for mouse clicks. So let's go up to this grid listener here. And we can add a method to this, something like void click. Maybe just click is fine. And then what do we want to actually, what information do we actually want to pass to the listener when the mouse is clicked? Well, certainly the grid X and the grid Y. And I think also we want to know what mouse button has been clicked. So we could have a button value here. I should actually make these ints. And maybe the state of the cell there. But then again, we could easily add a get cell state. So maybe that's not so necessary. So let's just stick with uh, grid X, grid Y, and the mouse button. And now let's go back to the code that we were just writing. So here, I want to say, if grid listener is not equal to null, so in other words, if it has been set, then we can call that method. So grid listener dot click, and we're going to pass in grid X, grid Y. And where do we get the mouse button information from? Well, it's just E dot get button. And this mouse event will tell us which mouse button has been clicked. So 
if it's a three button mouse, then the third rightmost mouse button, that would give us uh, number three, I think. The leftmost one, that's probably gonna be one. Uh, if there's only two mouse buttons, it'll just be one and two. So you can figure out from that, basically, whether you've got a left click or a right click pretty easily, if you need to do that. So now let's add a listener. And you'll notice I've got an error in main frame, and that's because now that we've got two methods in this grid listener interface, so up here, it now has two methods. We can't just use a simple Lambda expression here now to implement the one and only method that we previously had. So what we need to do now instead is something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's just move that aside for the moment. Let's say new grid listener and use an anonymous class type syntax. <laughs> that, that looked like it went badly wrong, but it's actually just because of this code here. I'll maybe just cut it for the moment. It's actually okay, so Control shift f So we've got an implementation for grid ready and for click, and we've just got to finish the bracket there. And this is actually a grid panel dot grid listener. Yep, so now we've finally got rid of all the errors. We could get rid of these overrides, because in, in this case, I don't think they really add all that much to it. And we definitely don't need these comments here. So now can I paste back, yeah, I can paste back the code that I originally had in there to set a couple of cells to different states, which is interesting to do. Let's just format that, that looks pretty nice. So that should just work as before at the moment. But the thing is we can now detect mouse clicks. So here when we click with the mouse, let's try setting a new cell state. So let's add a new cell state actually. So I'm going to add uh, maybe color.white for the foreground. Let's give it an ID of three. And we'll have color dot maybe red for the background. And let's put an asterisk on there. By the way, I've tried using uh, more sort of exotic Unicode characters. Like there's, for Minesweeper, we've got like bomb icons normally. And there is like a bomb icon in the Unicode character set, but it doesn't work here for some reason. I'm not completely sure why, but I'm pretty happy anyway with uh, the kind of standard character set. And you could always uh, modify this so you can use little images of your own if you wanted, instead of using characters if you really needed unusual icons like that. So now let's see if we can do grid panel dot set cell. And first we pass in the state to set and then we pass in uh, the coordinates to set it. And I'm just gonna use the coordinates supplied by the click. So I click a cell, it should change to this new state now. Now, when we run this, we find that it doesn't actually work. So if I run this, we should find that anyway. Yeah, I can click, but it doesn't make any difference. And what's going on, I think, hopefully, is that just because you've set something in this internal array here, doesn't mean Swing's going to redraw the panel in order to get it to redraw, you might think we should call the paint method, but we should never call the paint method directly. This should always be done by the swing system itself. What we need to call is repaint. So we could create like a convenience method here. Let's call it public void update. And then in there, we'll just call repaint. And that will trigger swing to call the paint method and it will supply that graphics. Uh, so let's let's just try that. So in here after the click, I can call grid panel dot update. The reason I'm not putting update in set cell is because I might want to set a whole bunch of cells and then I just want to redraw at the end. I probably don't want to redraw after setting every single cell if there is a whole bunch of them to be set because that would be inefficient. So this is just more efficient and let's run it and we'll try clicking something. Oh, wow, it works, look. That's pretty nice. Okay, so we can't do much with this really at the moment, but by implementing um, much more complicated logic in here, we could really do all kinds of things. And in fact, probably in addition to set cell, the one thing that would be really useful is to have a get cell. So if we look where we've got set, cell, we should probably put in here a public integer 
or int get cell and int x int y and return states y and x because that would mean if you think about it that you could now implement pretty complex logic here in mainframe we could get a cell state and then set it to something else depending on its existing state let's actually just try that quickly just as a, a demo so here we could say int state equals grid panel dot get cell state and we could pass in grid x and grid y and then we could say if state equals um, let's say the default which is one and which is zero actually then we could set the cell to maybe one else. So if it's in some other state, let's set it to maybe three. So you can you could create really complicated logic like this and then we'll update it. So now we should get a different result depending on whether the cell is in state one or the default state. So this is in state one, I think, right? So if I click that, it goes to red. Uh, whereas the others, if I click them, they go to blue. Click again, now it's gonna to go to red, like that. So it's quite nice, I think. Okay, so have fun with that. And uh, please don't forget, consider checking out my website. And there's lots of free courses on here, as well as paid courses. And you can actually subscribe to all my courses for only a little over $20 a month, and then you get access to all of them, at least that's the current price, and you can unsubscribe anytime you like. Before we finish here, there are a couple of things I want to fix. So I've been looking at this for a while now. I've changed some of the colors here, but it's the same application. And one thing I've noticed is that you can click outside the border, and I forgot to do any kind of bounds checking. If we click the error that comes up when you do that, you can actually see it's in grid panel, it's in get cell here. So what we need to do is just check the bounds and make sure that we're not trying to get or set values for a cell that are out of the range of this 2D states array. So let's say here, if X is less than zero, we're not interested in it in that case, or if Y is less than zero, then we want to ignore it also, or if x is greater than or equal to grid width, same deal, or if y is greater than or equal to grid height. In all of these cases, we don't want to do anything, so we can just return. Let's just return minus one or something uh, to indicate that we couldn't get a valid state here. And in set cell, we also need to return. So just return and don't do anything in that case. And I think that will fix the problem so that if I run it now, I can set the cells. And if I click outside, it gets a click, but it doesn't do anything. That uh, This output here is just coming from some de debug output I put in because I was trying to figure out where it was going wrong. And that is here. Let's just get rid of that. So I was clicking it and it was crashing and I was thinking, what did I do wrong? But I forgot something pretty obvious that I really should have remembered that. One last really small thing that I found a bit more baffling, but I found a solution to it uh, by looking it up on the internet. And that is sometimes I can click here like now and it doesn't seem to do anything. And the reason for that is if you press the mouse on a cell and then move it and then release it, then that doesn't count as a click. So to fix that, all we have to do is, instead of overriding mouse clicked here in this mouse adapter, let's override mouse pressed. And that and that actually gives it a slightly faster feel, I found, in any case. So if I run it now, now as soon as I press the mouse, it does its thing. It registers the click without having to wait for the mouse release and that feels actually quite a bit nicer. 
Okay, so that really is it for this little mini course. I hope you enjoyed it and do check out my website. Subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. I'm going to be making more, I'm pretty sure, and we may turn this into a sort of Minesweeper clone or a cellular automata program or something in a future video. And until next time, happy coding.